Hey everyone, I've compiled all five of the Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison issues into one long movie for you. Enjoy. In the Legends comic Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison, we follow the narration and log of Lieutenant Tom, an enlistee of the Empire who served Palpatine and later moved high up in the ranks. Our story covers his mission to save Palpatine as he joins Vader after a terrorist attack that was unleashed. Sidious and over 70 clone troopers, stormtroopers, royal red guards, and imperial officers were all poisoned by a deadly gas called Aorth-6, a biologically engineered necrotic virus. Once inhaled, it liquefied the lungs and melted its victims from the inside out. The attack was planted by an imperial general named Gentis, who one day during a boring meeting filled with grand moths, escaped and came across the imperial crematorium, where he witnessed hundreds of dead imperials being fed into an incinerator every minute. From that moment on, he developed a coup to bring down Sidious before his warmongering ways killed more innocents. The day of that coup is today's story. As Vader arrives at the scene and obliterates the enemies, he tells Tom to come with him to find the Emperor. As they push their way through literally melting officers, troopers, and royal red guards, Vader stops in his tracks as he sees his master kneeling on the floor. Running to him, Palpatine's face is revealed with blood leaking from every orifice. Asking him how he's not dead yet, Palpatine responds through flooding blood that the dark side of the force is keeping the virus from killing him. Angered and in despair, Vader points to Tracta, igniting his blood red blade. Tracta tells him to stand down, assuring him it wasn't him and that their prime objective right now is to get the Emperor to safety, to move him into hiding. Vader replies with his ego, telling him the Emperor does not hide, when Palpatine cuts Vader off and informs him that Tracta is right, that he must go into hiding to recover. Now I'd like to step out of the comic for a second and just say this is one of the only times in canon or legends where Palpatine legitimately acknowledges the fact that he's not in any good shape and could die soon if he doesn't get the help from his loyal servants. Rarely do we ever see City as vulnerable and this is one of those few times that we really see him as a mortal being. Let's continue. As they move Palpatine to an advanced stealth transport housed in a secret hangar for the time being, they place him in a stasis chamber, which slows the virus from spreading, kind of like how a fridge slows down food from going bad. The Emperor would need time to recover his strength before they moved him. As Vader makes a final plan to hunt down the traitors and their leader, Tracta tells him not to underestimate Gentis, that he's fought in the Clone Wars and leads by example. Reconsidering, Vader summons a new plan to get the Emperor away to real safety before he's found. Asking him where he had in mind, Vader tells them of the many secret places that have all the facilities they need. And I know where to find them. As Vader and Tom walk into the abandoned Jedi Temple on Coruscant, Tom recognizes just how quiet and eerie it is. As the scene switches to where Sidious is being held with Tracta as his guard, the medical droid next to him, which if you recall, is the same droid that overlooked Vader's operation in Revenge of the Sith, begins to beep uncontrollably as if programmed, which is exactly what was happening. Gentis had ordered his engineers to hack into all droids within 5 kilometers of the area to kill all Imperial officers. While Vader and Tom continue through the temple, we now see them in the archive sector. As Vader senses danger, he ignites his lightsaber and the droids begin their attack, as Tracta just narrowly dodges a critical strike in the next scene. Tom warns Vader, shouting that the Jedi have come to fight, looking behind him as two hooded figures ignite their green lightsabers. As they fight back to back, Vader reassures him that they are just training droids. It seems during Order 66 the clones didn't destroy all the droids in the temple. As Vader destroys the Jedi training droids, Tracta gets the upper hand on his fight as well. In the following scenes, Vader just goes berserk and sends a force shockwave through the air, propelling objects with the force and his enemies. As the fights end in both parts of the city, Vader and Tom come before a weathered and broken looking door. As they enter, Vader commands that he must never tell anyone what he sees this night. Once inside, activating the security tapes, Vader demands to see Anakin's conference with the Jedi Masters during Council. As we see Anakin in the center of the room, he tells them how he's captured countless of Dooku's men, 
from officers to force wielders. Obi-Wan interrupts to ask him if he's requesting for another promotion. As Anakin refuses these claims, he simply asks the Council why all the men he's captured and defeated end up disappearing once he hands them over. Raising his voice, Anakin demands to know the truth, telling them he needs to know what happened to his prisoners of war. As Master Windu answers, he basically tells Anakin that he's making things up and that he's overstepped his authority. Telling them that it's not fair, Obi-Wan interrupts, explaining to Anakin that he's touched a nerve and to move on. Threatening the Council that he'll go to Palpatine and ask what really is going on, he storms out, leaving the Masters to discuss amongst each other. As Mace Windu tells them to let him go to Palpatine, that this is the one secret that not even Palpatine knew. Heck, the Senators and the rest of the galaxy didn't know. Which is why Obi-Wan asks them what will happen when they all find out that the Jedi Order has been running a secret prison for years. As Master Windu tells him that basically the Jedi have to take matters into their own hands and imprison all the evil dark side users and assassins away from society. Yoda says that war changed the Jedi to do these things, essentially saying drastic times call for drastic measures, and that when the war finally ends, they'll bring all the criminals to trial in court. As Obi-Wan tells the Council he wants to go see this prison in person, Yoda agrees it would be good to visit Jedi Master Skine, who guards it, as Mace then tells him the coordinates. It's in the mass shadow of the sixth moon of Diab, right on the fringe galaxy. Advising Obi-Wan not to take Skywalker, which is when Vader steps in and completely rages, telling them they plotted against the dark side from the very start. As he causes a massive storm from within the room, his rage contained in a spherical storm bubble. Which I have to cut in and say that Vader could perform Force Lightning, and in fact it was the most dangerous of them all. I'll make a separate video on this for tomorrow or this weekend if you like. It's pretty different from normal lightning since he had prosthetic hands. As Vader begins to settle his anger, he tells Tom to remember what he heard here today, that the Jedi always believed in shades of grey. Now this is probably the most important part of this video, which I think Disney is anchoring onto very hard. This is one of the first signs of acknowledgement from Vader that the Jedi dealt in shades of grey, that they were flawed. And I think this is something that Luke means in Episode 8, when he says the Jedi must end. As they pack their things and board the ship, Vader sets the coordinates for the Fringe Galaxy, to the sixth moon of Diab. Vader granted permission to set the prisoners free. The original idea was to give the prisoners the chance of freedom if they helped the Empire. However, Vader wanted to test them and let only the survivors to join the ranks. The first several pages consist of Tom, Tracta, and Vader fighting the prisoners that Anakin locked up in the Clone Wars, explaining the specialties of some and the loyalties of others, such as General Ur Loach, one of Dooku's enforcers that Anakin captured. He would use his tongue to draw enemies in, then bite their heads off with his many teeth. As Tom was about to be killed, his blaster flies out of his hand and into the control of Captain Sean Volta, a dark side user who was captured by Kit Fisto and Anakin. Her specialty was being able to manipulate blaster fire with the force, almost like how Kylo can freeze one, but she can control its speed and direction. As she hands it back to Tom, they continue to fight the rest. As he narrates the rest of the events, he explains how the night was far from a test. It was simply just violence, a massacre even, as Vader took on countless prisoners on his own. Coming across one powerful fallen Jedi named Baron Servan, he boasts to Vader about how he killed eight Jedi and their Padawans, telling him he has no clue why he's even there, or who he even is. Firing Force Lightning at Vader, the Dark Lord takes the hit, but keeps moving forwards like a machine. Here's something about Anakin's character for our files here. Tom explains Anakin finally brought Servan down when he started kidnapping younglings for Dooku. So from that being said, we can see Anakin always had a soft spot for children. It them. just goes to show how devoted he really was to saving Padme by killing the younglings. As Vader submits him to his will and everyone else who fought back, he ordered Tracta to tell them what it means to be an Imperial. As Tracta explains that the Jedi who left them to rot would have to pay the price and that the Empire does not run on their values, but rather solely for order and order alone. As Vader commands them all to kneel before him, they pledge their loyalty to him and are moved to go through rigorous training tests. 
As Tom calculates the death toll, he tells Vader that of the 207 prisoners, 174 were killed that night. Throats slashed, skulls crushed, and limbs shattered. I mean, just as we look at the scene itself, we can see torsos and limbs scattered about. The level of rawness that these stories are drawn in deliver just the right amount of darkness to help us feel the scene without it just being gory or over the top. I found this next part rather interesting. As Tom walks through the graveyard, he names the different casualties, their conviction, and who brought them in. Ronko Bist, to one of Dooku's men, leader of the Free Trandoshans, and the liaison to the Bounty Hunters Guild maimed by Anakin and arrested by Obi-Wan. As he continues to scan the field, he comes across a pilot droid that was brought down by Plo Koon and Anakin Skywalker. As he comes alive and screams for help, Tom tells Vader that more survivors live. Vader's reply was to kill them all. However, without any weapons to conserve his energy packs. So Tom basically just goes through the entire field and basically beats their brains in with a metal pipe. I mean, it just doesn't get more dark than this. As he completes his order, he runs inside to puke as Tracta tells him that Vader is very powerful and scary. However, he's a blunt instrument. He just believes in using the sword, not his head. Explaining that at Vader's side, he'll only learn to serve, but to come to him when he's ready to learn how to lead. The page quickly jumps to Gentis, observing a map of the Death Star as he awaits Tarkin's arrival, planning to assassinate him and then take the mantle as the Emperor of the Universe. A simple transition of power, as he calls it. The last and final scene of issue 4 is between Tom and Volta. As she is being questioned by him, she passionately opens up about why she hates the Jedi, Senators, and the Republic. She says how her parents were honest working people. How her father was a pilot and her mother a sculptor, who hid her from the Jedi in fear of them taking her for her force attunement. How she wanted to become a hyperspace engineer and how the Republic's troopers killed her father as they controlled his ship. How the Republic cut off supply lines to her home world, leading to her mother's death from starvation. And how her husband's blood contrasted strongly against the snow when the fighting occurred throughout the planet. As she looks to Tom for his surprised assessment, she tells him that's what really should be on her file when she was arrested. Instead, the Republic just writes what they want to brand people with, instead of the facts. As he turns to her to ask if she really does know how to track a ship coming out of hyperspace, confirming with question, Tom looks at her with compassionate and determined eyes, telling her, We have a ship to catch. As Vader and his crew use Captain Volta's hyperdrive calculations for the best jump points, they continue their research on where to join Tarkin. They understood the fatality of the crew on board and whatever they would hit if they were just one calculation off. As we see the entire graduating class of the Imperial Academy, Tarkin's shuttle begins to land in the hangar. As his ship lowers, Gentis tells his last son that the terror will be over soon. That when Palpatine killed his other brothers through the many wars, he vowed to put an end to that and with Tarkin about to be slain, that promise would be fulfilled. As Tarkin walks out of his shuttle, he mocks Gentis by asking him why he has children there to greet him, ordering him to gather all his soldiers, all while Vader and the rest found a ripple in the space lanes, cutting across them and now waiting for the right moment to appear. As Tarkin is held hostage with his clone troopers, he barks at Gentis, finally understanding who is behind the attack. As Gentis runs his same line again, telling him how he's saving the Empire because Sidious was evil and crazy, how his sons died because of him, where Tarkin coldly but epically responds, maybe they'd have survived if they were better trained, and that he'll see them again, soon. With a sudden loud blast and a flash of lights, Vader and his men crash the scene, his lightsaber ignited deflecting bolts while the rest walked out guns blazing. They had finally arrived to save Tarkin, kill Gentis and his men, and fight for the Empire. As Vader's men were outnumbered 8 to 1, there were a few things Gentis' army didn't have, and that was a Sith Lord in his ranks, or a bitter exiled Jedi. He lacked expendable soldiers and unpredictable warriors, although he did have well-trained men and even explosive experts, but he didn't have sharpshooters or cyborgs with onboard targeting computers. What he didn't have were war heroes. As Tom called for Gent's son, he turned his blaster to his side and fired round after round of blasts into the cadet, 
dropping him to the floor. As Gentis runs to his dead son, holding him and crying hysterically, thinking his pain couldn't grow anymore, his world began to shrink before him. During this sorrow and despair, he was hit with a paralyzing fire that bore so deep into his bones he could feel the molecular structure of his cells incinerating to char. As he howled in pain, thinking the death of his final son was the worst pain in the galaxy, he finally understood the last thing he did not possess. Your reign is over, Headmaster. <laughs> As Gentis laid on the floor motionless and burnt to an unrecognizable crisp, Tom looked at him in fear of just how powerful the Emperor was. Now, I'm going to once again sidestep and say that in the comics and legends, Palpatine's Force Lightning was ridiculous. At his full power, he could destroy worlds, let alone fry someone to oblivion. I'll make a power series that focuses on characters' most insane abilities and break down just how strong they really were. As the rest of the betrayers are gunned down and left there to be made an example of, Palpatine promotes Tracta to Grand Moff and replaces Gentis as headmaster of the Imperial Academy. Tracta wanted to enlist and train the convicts. Vader wanted them dead, so Tom proposed to meet in the middle and send them away on a new ship to exile, away from the Empire. As Anakin's prisoners flew away, Tracta is relieved that they are at least alive, noting it as the honorable thing. With a massive explosion in the sky, and to Tracta's surprise, the shuttle explodes, killing all those on board. As he blames Tom and walks away, Vader tells him he has done well. While Sidious speaks to Vader about reviewing Tom's life, we see Volta is alive and well in Tom's apartment. It seems there's a romantic relationship between the two. As Sidious mentions how the boy is ruthless and would make a worthy successor should Vader ever fail, he orders his apprentice to keep training him for when the time comes. Well, we all know Vader, and he can't have a successor, ever. So he orders Tom out to his balcony on Coruscant and tells him he has just one last lesson for him. With great obedience, Tom exclaims that his mentorship means more to him than anything. Vader grabs him with his arm, using his cybernetics to lift the body with ease over the rails. He tells him, Never suffer rivals. And throws Tom to the streets of Coruscant below as his screams bounce off the building walls until nothing more can be heard. Well, we have to hand it to Vader. He truly is the most cold and ruthless villain in the galaxy. He just simply does not care for anyone after he lost Padme. And his life, at least, until he meets his son. You were right about me. Thank you so much for all of your support, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day or night, and I'll see you all in tomorrow's episode of Star Wars Theory. Until we meet again, remember... The Force will be with you. Always.